Hello everybody and welcome back to the MedBros channel and today since I am done with medical school and about to start residency in a few weeks which is very exciting and I'm a little bit nervous about we're going to take a look back at everything that I would change about my medical school experience. So overall, I absolutely loved my medical school experience. It was an amazing time. I learned so much, made a lot of good friends, just had a great time overall. But there were a lot of things along the way that I felt should have been done differently. And some of what I'm gonna say is gonna apply across the board to other medical schools. So maybe you guys can relate to it. Maybe some medical schools have already picked up on the stuff I'm gonna say. But there were definitely times where I was just not feeling what was going on. And we're gonna talk about how we can change that for the next upcoming classes. Maybe somebody will listen to these suggestions or maybe later down the road we can make these changes ourselves, or maybe they're just not changes you agree with and you think I'm full of it. So let's go figure it out and let's jump into what I would change about medical school. So let's start off with the change that would make the first two years of medical school a lot easier and that is how we select our teachers. So a lot of the times medical schools will pull a researcher or a clinician that they have on staff and that are kind of an expert in a topic like if they have a cardiologist or if they have somebody doing research in cardiology or biochemistry, they'll come and teach that section. And while that's great, I don't think that is the best way to optimize learning for students. You really need somebody that is a good teacher. Those things, being an expert in something and having them just show up and teach, they don't go together all the time. You may have some excellent teachers, but the main thing you really need is somebody that knows how to teach. I remember my biochemistry professor uh, or doctor in my first year of medical school would kind of show up put up some PowerPoint slides, just show the pathways. And I know biochemistry is hard to teach, but it can be done. Biochemistry can be taught in a way that a lot of it starts piecing it together. It's presented in a way that, you know, you can pick up on easier and you find out what's important and you can execute on the test and carry the knowledge with you that is most important for your future. So that is a skill you need to have. You can't just have anybody show up that's an expert in the field. It's kind of an art to teach. It's an art to figure out what's the most important thing and put it forward and you really need to be skilled at that, that and that's who we should be looking at when we're hiring for teaching medical students it's a it's a different job you can't just have anybody show up so that's the first change that i would make really be selective about who we're putting forward to teach our medical students another change i would make to the curriculum is the way it's set up right now is the first two years are basic sciences at a lot of these medical schools and then the third and fourth year you spend at different rotations at hospital sites and i think the first two years i understand that there's a lot of information uh, that medical schools have to put in their curriculum and teach students and a lot of it is getting added and added on every year but just because it's getting added and added on doesn't mean medical students have to know all this stuff there's a lot of stuff in those first two years that medical students to be frank just don't need to know they're going to forget they're going to leave it out there's a fine line to play on what's important what's not important what medical students need to learn and what is important to recognize is that there are four years in medical school and you really want to use that time to put together the best curriculum that you can for a medical student to then go forward to residency where they are full-on doctor to have them feel really prepared at that point you really can't be wasting time with certain small topics so what i'm proposing is basically a restructuring of the curriculum to a point where what is really not necessary should be taken out get done with the clinical basic sciences and really get to the training on how to be a doctor. The first two years is not really training you how to be a doctor. Of course, physiology is important. Anatomy is important. All of these kind of basic sciences you must know, but there are a lot of things in there that do not ever translate to being an actual doctor in a clinical setting. So we have to look at the curriculum and really tease out what is not needed, what is needed, so we can give more time to what should be needed to train our doctors. And that leads us into my next point, which is a huge, huge point. This is my biggest point that I'm gonna make in this video. And that point is if you look at any kind of professional training, whether it be your training to even be a hairstylist, if you're training to be a mechanic, if you're training to be whatever it is in a professional field where you're doing something professionally, your training really focuses on what you're going to be doing in that profession. For example, I was on a ICU rotation once and we had a pharmacist student on our team. And I think I posted about this on my Instagram on, on one of my posts. Um, we had a pharmacy student and questions were being asked to us about the practical care of patients. 
uh, according to pharmacology. And while us medical students, we knew just as much as the pharmacists when it came to, uh, you know, what the drugs were, what their mechanism of actions were, uh, what their side effects were, the pharmacy students knew the next step beyond that in terms of when the doctor asked, what is the dosing for this patient? What is, how do we manage the fluids along with giving this medication? Uh, how do we practically give this medication in the hospital setting? Does it happen IV? Does it happen per oral? What are the things you have to take into consideration when you're debating whether to give it in either form? Medical students were clueless. I personally was clueless at that point in my training. Nobody had ever gone over that stuff with me. The actual practical training on how to apply what I learned in the book to what goes on in the hospital. And that is a huge missing aspect of medical training. Now, a lot of people will say you pick up on it in third and fourth year. Third and fourth year can be absolute hit or miss with your rotations. You are with various different attendings. They have their own ways of doing things. Some of them don't want to teach students. Some of them really want to teach students. Uh, Different emphases will be put on different things when you're on different rotations. Uh, there's no core curriculum. There's no way to go through the knowledge in an organized fashion on what you need to pick up. For example, when I went on my internal medicine rotation, I was maybe two, three weeks in before the doctor even asked me, my attending even asked me, uh, do you know even what these wigglies are on the on the monitor do you know what each of these kind of signs mean and these numbers mean on the on the bedside monitor how do you hook up a bedside monitor what do you you know when does the bedside monitor get hooked up who's responsible for it it's minor details like that like the entire workflow of how a hospital works another example the most basic of all examples is when i went to my third year i didn't even understand the workflow of the hospital where an individual comes in from the ed you kind of triage them then they get sent to the inpatient team, which is your internal medicine, hospitalist, inpatient team. Then they take care of them. Then you have specialists coming in kind of consulting. Like this whole structure is not even known to medical students until you are thrown in it at third and fourth me uh, year medical school. And of course there are gonna be exceptions. I'm sure there's a lot of you out there that were like, I received a thorough training course and I learned all, it's hit or miss. And uh, I know I'm not alone in this. If you go across, scour the internet, anecdotal evidence, um, just talking to people. A lot of medical students are clueless when they're thrown into the third or fourth year. And a lot of them don't even get that training throughout third or fourth year. I was lucky enough that I had to go out of my way at a lot of these rotations to pick up on some of this stuff. But if you don't, you can easily go to residency not knowing some of this basic knowledge and a lot of these people pick it up. And of course, these a lot of these people pick it up just fine. I know, uh, especially IMGs that come from out of the country, they don't have any rotations, third and fourth year rotations. They just hit the ground running and residency and they pick it up just fine and they do well. Um, it's just a matter of what are we paying for? What are we doing with our time in medical school, uh, especially during our third and fourth years? And how can we improve that to make it a much better learning environment and pumping out much better doctors? Because there's a lot that can be done. There's a lot that can be done to not only make medical students' lives easier as they transition to residency, just overall starting that clinical reasoning earlier, getting them on the right track earlier can make their lives a lot easier and generate a lot better doctors that most importantly will get best patient care. And that is going to lead me to my next couple of points in that medical students need to be trained to be comfortable with the EMR very early on, the electronic medical record, whether that be Epic, Cerner, or whatever it might be, or even the general generic, some kind of simulation can be set up. We really need to be comfortable because that is an absolute critical aspect of your training going further. Everything has to do with documentation. Majority of your time is spent in front of a computer. Everything has to be done on this epic system. So why not learn it early? Why are there not entire courses in medical school dedicated to learning the EMR, mastering the EMR, learning all the shortcuts, making your life easier? That should be a critical component of medical training, not just some random one week, one day course. Uh, it really should be, you should be using it throughout your patient training and experience. And that again, leads me to my next point, which is there needs to be so much more simulation training for medical students. Why is it that where you have an airline uh, pilot, they are responsible for hundreds of lives every single day, every time they get up there and they go through rigorous, rigorous simulation training. They go through every simulation, simulated scenario that they know of, in the books, they have everything documented in a really good checklist kind of handout uh, for every scenario. 
they go through these scenarios, make sure they're comfortable with it, when things go wrong, every which way is thrown at them. They have these entirely uh, simulation setups with these giant monitors and everything simulated perfectly in the way that it's gonna be in a real airplane. Why is it in that case such severe training while in medical school uh, training where you have doctors that are responsible for people's lives and uh, have one wrong medication through the EMR, something can go wrong. A lot of these things end up killing patients. Why is there not that same amount of simulation set up for medical students? Uh, especially for things like surgery. Why is there not a completely, we have these little games, surgeon simulator and things like that. You can easily, with that technology, if somebody puts the invest some money and gets it ready, should be able to simulate entire surgeries with the technology we have now. Uh, we should entirely be able to simulate patient interactions down to all the different procedures you need to do, lumbar punctures. If there was a lumbar puncture procedure game, even regular people might play it. It might even be that interesting. So a lot of these simulations need to be put together. All these different scenarios, ACLS pathways, um, everything you can think of, bradycardia, what do you do step by step, go through the checklist, get comfortable with it. That should be a majority of our third and fourth year, or at least third year and then fourth year go out into the hospital and do it. A lot of this kind of training is missing. A lot of what is missing in medical school and the main thing that I'm trying to get at with this video is a lot of what you're going to be doing as a doctor is not what is taught to you in medical school. Medical school is a bunch of facts, physiology, anatomy, while all important is not really what's going to translate to making you an excellent doctor. An excellent doctor is somebody that can look at a patient, uh, take every all the information given to them, go through a clinical reasoning process, know what's going on at that point, decipher using your knowledge, know what's going on, and then make the right moves uh, going forward to optimize care for the patient. There's so much that goes into that. There's so much training that goes into that to get in the right mental mindset, to go through the clinical reasoning, to have the knowledge, to know what to do, uh, and then execute it. And, and all of that is uh, it's some of it is there, like I said, kind of getting that base clinical knowledge, but a lot of it is trying to put it together through your third and fourth year experiences that are kind of just loosely scattered everywhere. There's no structure and um, there's no key critical components that you need to know by the end of your third and fourth year. Not all medical students are coming out of some standardized rotation setup. Um, and a lot of medical students, I would say, are unprepared for residency um, across the board. And it's not that they're not gonna get it. Like I said, there are individuals that start residency from ground zero, basically just know basic clinical knowledge and they do just fine. You're just gonna have a rough time in your intern year. But we can definitely make that transition a lot easier. We can stop wasting time of a lot of medical students in third and fourth year, which is a common complaint I hear across the board as well. Something needs to be done, whether it be during the first two years where you're learning your scientific knowledge and medical knowledge, and then third and fourth year is really where it needs to, a change needs to be seen in how we're training our doctors. Bring simulation, bring EMR, uh, go through these scenarios, go through the logistics of how hospital care, inpatient care, outpatient care, uh, how it all works, how do you coordinate with the pharmacy, how do you coordinate with um, other members of the team, nurse communication, uh, what needs to be done step by step for a patient when they come into the hospital, out of the hospital, uh, things like fluid management, electrolyte um, repletion, uh, diabetes management. These are all basic things you would think coming out of a, a medical school you would know. How to do something like showing up to an emergency on a car crash on the side of the street and, and understanding what you need to do to stop someone's bleeding, stop, uh, you, uh, you know, just basic evaluation and management you learn that through residency you don't really learn that through medical school which is a shame and I think a lot needs to be changed to make medical students much more prepared now I know a lot of you guys have seen my pass fail video on how step one is turning from a score to pass fail and in that video I was a little critical about how it's gonna be more about who you know and all this other stuff you can go check out that video if you haven't seen it um, I am gonna say that there is a chance for this to be a very very good positive for the medical students um, in the fact that once you make it pass no pass you will now have a huge amount of time uh, where students are not grinding out these little facts and trying to get every little point to pass this exam and you can use that 
as an advantage to do these things that I'm saying, to create a course for EMR and have all these simulations, to have more time to learn more practical knowledge, people will be more open because students, when we have these guest lectures that come in and they're telling us, oh, this is how you do it. We get like maybe sometimes at my program, we would get like a guest lecture showing up and for one day telling us about all about like nephrology and the clinical things about it and all this stuff that I'm going over that is important. We would have one day, a couple hours of a guest lecture to show up. Maybe we would have more time now to have more lectures along those lines. We would have students paying attention, not doing their inky flashcards while the guest lecture is up there or an actual lecture is up there telling important information that you'll need later on in the hospital. Because I do remember when an individual, we had a radiologist come in and they were telling us, oh, you know, you're gonna look so good if you know how to read the ultrasound and CTs. And my only focus at that point was, that's great that later on, this is gonna be good, but right now I need to ace this exam. So I'm gonna sit here and do my questions while you're up there and I'm in this mandatory class. So hopefully we can fix all that by having students pay attention to the more important things and kind of put this pass fail exam on the back burner, something that everybody's just gonna pass if you study enough and you, you have that basic knowledge. So I think this can turn out to be quite a big positive. There are still those negatives that I mentioned from before, but I think you will churn out better doctors. You will churn out individuals that are uh, less stressed, less pressured, more happy to be there learning the important things, more prepared when they do have to make that jump to residency. So it's a give or take, there are some positives and negatives, but I think if changes are made so that there's an environment conducive for learning so that you have residents coming out that are, uh, medical students coming out that are ready for residency, I think overall this pass fail thing might actually be what medical students need. So thank you guys so much for tuning into the MedBros channel. Be sure to like and subscribe and we will see you guys in the next one.